look at that scent trail coming off that bait bag. So I put my GoPro in a lobster trap, and there's tons of bait in there. You've got mackerel, pollock, some pogies. All this bait that's been kind of just festering is now in the water and ready for the lobsters. Lobsters have a very good sense of smell, so they're going to be following that bait trail, that scent trail. They're going to be following that all the way to the lobster trap. And since they've got really good sniffers, they should be able to find it. And I put a uh, mackerel there. That's a long dead mackerel. It's about five inches long. I'm kind of put it there for perspective. Um, and I'm also thinking about maybe putting a good luck charm in each one to kind of differentiate these videos because I'm planning to do multiple lobster trap videos in the future if you guys like it. So on this episode of Seaside Nomad, we've got the GoPro in a lobster trap. It's about 20, 25 feet of water. The trap actually kind of landed a little weird, it landed a little off kilter. They don't always land flat because the terrain is various. And as you can see with this trap, it's taken a beating before. So they tend to move around a little bit with the waves and the, uh, the currents. So surprisingly, the GoPro actually lasted for about an hour 20 in this cold water. This is May. The water's reasonably cold in the upper 40s here in New England. And uh, I was very surprised that when we pulled it out, the GoPro actually died just as we were pulling the trap up onto the lobster boat. So as I mentioned, the trap was down there for about an hour 20, but I don't want to make you watch that entire time. So I found the highlights, and I'm going to narrate over it when the highlights happen. So don't forget to like and subscribe, guys, and uh, enjoy the video. All right, after three minutes, if you look to the top right, there's a fish swimming by, and that fish is a pollock. I slowed it down a little bit so you guys could see, and then I put it real time after. So it's a four minute mark, we've got our first lobster. It's below the trap, it's below the bait bag to the left there. You can see just a small little lobster cruising around, looking for that bait. He smells it, he just can't figure out how to get to it. The trap has been in the water for 11 minutes and we've got ourselves another lobster. This one as well is below the trap, below the bait bag there. You can see its claws, it's trying to get inside. It's like. I want some of that delicious, delicious bait. Give me some of that mackerel and pollock. Mm -mm. That's what they love. That's their favorite. They're, <laughs> this guy can't figure out how to get in. And a lot of them, they'll come up to the trap and they'll crawl all over it. But it takes them a little while to actually figure out how to get inside. Also, just so you know, I sped this up a little bit. Turns out lobsters aren't the fastest moving creatures in the water. So I sped up this video and then some of the other highlights. It's 13 minutes in. We've got a lobster below the trap trying to figure out how to get inside. It smells a bait, but can't figure out how to get in. Come on, Mr. Lobster, come on in the sides. No worries, buddy. You're gonna be fine. What's the worst that could happen? Also, what we've got going on here to the right, we've got a cunner swimming by. I slowed it down. Cunner's a pretty cool fish. It must have caught the scent of the bait, and it just kind of swam by to get a little look. Let's watch this lobster below the trap, try and problem solve how to get into the trap. But let's watch it at two times normal speed. We've got a second confirmed lobster below the trap. Finally, at 21 minutes, we've got our first lobster that figured out how to get into the trap. Only issue is, it's way too small to keep. It's about the size of a big crayfish. Look at him go. <laughs> Count it. If you look to the right of the lobster trap, we've got a fish swimming by, and that fish is a pollock. Pollock are great lobster bait, but they're also really good to eat, and they're highly sustainable. 
If you look at the back left of the trap, it's hard to see because it's a very small lobster, but it comes in through the escape vent. This is not a traditional way for a lobster to come into a lobster trap, but this little guy is so small, he can just kind of get in there and crawl, and he actually can fit through the bars, so it's a really small lobster, but if you just look at him go, he's going nuts. And it looks like he went for our good luck charm. He's chewing on that mackerel because they just love it. This little lobster is like the Harry Houdini of the uh, lobster world. I don't even know how he gets out of there, but he just slides right out of the trap, only to come right back in. And we have some more inquisitive Pollock. They're swimming by. They're checking it out. None swam in, but uh, they definitely checked it out. In this shot, we've got a good-sized lobster below the trap, trying to figure out how to get in, and then a pollock to the right that just swims by. The trap has been in the water for an hour and 13 minutes. You can hear a boat engine. That's actually us. We were looking for the correct buoy to grab. And uh, I'm going to put it on mute so you don't have to deal with the engine noise. Ah, finally. Took over an hour, but we've got a lobster that has come into the trap. This one is probably a keeper lobster. Tough to tell with the water, but yeah, look at that guy. Look at him go. So if you look at the lobster's right claw, the bigger, meatier-looking one, that's called the crusher claw. It's made to kind of pulverize the flesh or whatever it's eating. And then the left claw is the pincer. That one's kind of made for more tearing. Uh, and basically, it's a scavenger. It's going to kind of eat whatever it can eat. It may even eat other lobsters, crabs, fish, anything. You know, they're opportunistic. So in this situation, it's trying to get through the bag. It's struggling because of the mesh, but it smells that there's food, and it's just trying its best to kind of mash its face to try to get to that food. And uh, it's got to be overloaded with its senses because there's so much bait there. So I'm going to let you guys watch this lobster as it tries to do its work. It's really cool to see one this close. And stick around to the end because there's going to be a surprise, something I never saw coming. So we had no idea when we started pulling up this lobster trap whether there was anything in it. And to see this lobster just shoots out. This is us pulling the trap out. The lobster's like, nope, I'm out of here, buddy. It uses its really strong tail fin to kind of go backwards. That's one of their strongest muscles in their body is their tail. And they use it to kind of go backwards. So I thought, if you look here, that the lobster was gone and that it just took off. But just keep watching, see what happens.
So as we're pulling up this trap, I thought when I was watching the video that the lobster had gone. But then, look at this. The lobster just flies off. Here's the question. Was that the same lobster from before? Or was it another lobster that had been just at a camera view, holding on to the trap? We call those riders. I want you guys to tell me in the comments, what do you think that, was that the original lobster that we saw, or was it a different one? And if you want to see me do more videos like this, let me know in the comments. Also, if you have any ideas of what else I could hang as Lucky Charms in the trap, let me know and maybe I'll do it. Anyways, the video on the GoPro is about to die, so I'll catch you later.